it's your girl to shane i'm back with another video if you're new to my channel welcome 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 those of you that's not new what's up with the do fam um yeah make sure that you click that like and subscribe button just for your girl being back okay um we'll have a little chit chat while ooh, let me turn this off until, while i start i'm while i do my hair y'all i'm just about to blow dry and press it out i'm gonna blow dry it off camera I um, once i get through this intro i shampoo yeah, I shampooed it last night and I conditioned it. You gonna go watch your iPad and eat your cereal, please? <laughs> yeah. So, please. I have daddy. Huh? Daddy farts. Daddy farts? Yeah. Uh, right. Why are we talking about daddy's farts? Yeah. Uh, uh, daddy's not even here. I'm gonna, he look, funny. I would tell daddy you throw him on the under the bus. You are throwing daddy under the bus because he's not even here. Why are you talking about daddy's farts? Okay, so, um, as you can see, I have my hands full, but I just want to come and tell y'all, give y'all an update, talk to y'all. I am editing some footage. I had, first off, let's get into the nails. I need a feel. The original set, I got done, and then I've been doing my own feels and stuff, so I have a video for that. Mazi said, look at his his manicure all right so um but i just wanted to give y'all an update because y'all the i had a little scare last night i am 30 weeks pregnant and i'm gonna show y'all the stomach and, uh, and been pregnant okay i don't need to be doing that after i was scared so i'm gonna go off camera i'm gonna blow dry my hair and then i'm gonna come back once i'm getting started with the um the Mama. flat ironing. Mama. What is it? Yeah. I don't know what I'm gonna do to my hair. So I might be flat iron straightening it for like a foundation for like a slick ponytail in the next day or two. Or I might end up straightening, but I really just want to do some jumbo knotless, which I know I don't have to straighten my hair for. Um it's kinda gonna make it a little bit easier though. And it's just I'm just straightening it because I'm undecided. Oh. Not for the knot list so i'm just going to press it out show you guys and have a little chit chat um so and i had did mozzie's hair he did not keep his do-rag on last night oh, so they're standing up like suck. julio but mario stuck mario stuck no they suck. Oh, suck yeah you should have put your hair your scarf on last night your yeah. do-rag um I'm going to put these in a ponytail so they lay flat, okay? Okay. And then the front ones, I don't know what to tell you about those, baby. You got to start putting your scarf on. Sorry. It's okay. Oh, I'm sorry. So, um, I'll do that later because I need to do a little band. I don't feel like getting up. Okay. All right. Let me just let me go sit down with y'all. Mm -hmm. Lego piece? No, bad thing. Okay, just don't sit down. Please don't sit down. Alright, so I'm about to blow dry my hair because I'm actually very hot right now. So, I'll be back. Alright, y'all, I'm, I'm back. I'm going to use a little bit of heat protectant. I really don't like to use heat protectant. Um... I used to like used to use like chi and Moroccan oil or something like that, or Moroccan oil afterwards. I need to get back on that. Um, but it's gonna like a little drop per section. Not too much, not too much, not really on the roots because, um, like I said, I might do some not listen. I don't want, or if I do like a slick pony, I really don't want that cast of. Y'all know what I'm talking about, where y'all use products and stuff. So. Um, yeah, so, if you see a little bit of split ends or damage, I know I'm working on it. Um, but yeah, so let's just get right into what I wanted to come and update y'all on. And just tell y'all about my little experience last night. And I just really wanted to come back to you guys. I have not been with you guys in a little minute. Let me drink some water.
That's important. A hair clip. All right, so first things first, y'all, 30 weeks pregnant, your girl is tired. I'm tired. They're still notifying me about my appointment tomorrow, but I technically don't have an appointment tomorrow, so, um, because my OB is out, so they put me with somebody else in the office that I actually am familiar with, I requested him, so. Instead of my appointment tomorrow, they're doing it today. Um, and that's my routine appointment. That's just my 30-week appointment. I am not at the point where I'm going every two weeks. And plus, um, my insurance pays for a home, covers a home nurse. So, yeah, okay, no. Mom is recording. Can you please? All right. Thank you, Mama. You're welcome. You're welcome. Okay. Go sit down. Huh? Y'all, let me get him situated. I'll be back. All right. So, yeah. That's what I was saying. Basically, um, so I have a home health nurse. Well, a home nurse that comes every so often. Then I have um, maternal fetal medicine, and I have my regular OB. So this is what's crazy. My home nurse has been here this week, and then I have my OB appointment tomorrow. Um, I've been feeling great for the most part overall. Um, I mentioned in another video, like I've been doing Instacart and stuff, and I've still been doing Instacart, seven months pregnant. Yes, I've still been doing Instacart. Am I still seven months? Because seven month starts at 28 weeks, right? I don't know, but y'all, uh, me in 30 weeks, only thing I feel is big, but like, I'm not complaining about the size. I just noticed it's harder to get up off the floor and things of that nature. Y'all probably like, why are you on the floor? Y'all, I have a three-year-old and he's developed this Lego fetish recently. So I'm on the floor playing with blocks and Legos, okay? Um, but yesterday I felt great all day. Well, actually the last two days I've actually been feeling kind of like tired and drained. Like the third trimester blues have kind of like kicked in as far as like my energy is low. Um, and amongst other things, but I'm starting to feel like I found out the answer to why my energy was low last night. So I went to go take a shower. And I was in the shower probably like an hour because I had started washing my hair. I mean, got in there to do my hair. I was going to wash it. And then I realized that the conditioner that I actually went to go buy was shampoo. I didn't check. I picked up the Ozzy shampoo instead of conditioner. I like to use that conditioner to tangle my hair. Um, I might not do that whole pass again. I, I, so I literally waited in the shower while my husband went and got conditioner because I didn't have any conditioner at the house at all. So I'm waiting on him to come back and then I finish and I proceed. I did turn the water off after a while because um, it took him a little a little while, some time. The store is up the street. Um, so I got out. I'm laying down. I'm talking to him. I'm playing township. We're talking. He's watching me play the game. And I tell him, like, you know, my every now and then, I, for those of you that are new, I have a cervical cerclage, which is basically a cervical stitch to help me from going into the preterm labor for my service giving out. Um, so every now and then, like, my daughter's low. Any pregnancy, like, you might feel pressure or something when your, your baby's low anyway. So I was like, dang, you know, she's low again. She was, like, kicking me in the in the crotch like I could feel her kicking me really low or whatever and then as we proceed to lay there like my stomach was really tight and hard but I noticed that it was coming and going so I'm just laying there and I'm like <laughs> like I know this ain't no contraction baby 
I know this ain't no contraction. So okay. I just keep laying there. And then I was, I told my husband, he was like, do you need to go get checked out? And I'm like, hold on, let me time them. So I timed a few of them and they were four minutes apart. Like not even, they were pretty consistent, consistently four minutes apart. Um, so I'm like, mm -mm. if y'all saw my trauma start story the last time I had contractions four and five minutes apart, I was in active labor. So... Having a stitch, I was not about to play no games. So after a few of them, laying there about 30 minutes, I had drank water and everything too, y'all. And mind you, I'm laying down. So, but overall, just I'm not playing with contractions because I know I have a high pain tolerance. And with my tra trauma story of delivering my daughter, I actually slept through most of my labor. Like I labored all night. And I just kept rolling over to get comfortable when I had a contraction in my sleep, not realizing it was contraction. I thought I was constipated or something. I don't, I don't know. So, um, yeah, basically, I realized I was having contractions. And I don't know why. I don't know if me realizing or what, but the contractions actually did increase in intensity. They weren't bad. Like, painful. They were uncomfortable. A couple of them were kind of um, painful. So, we decided to get up and go to the hospital to go get checked out. My husband and Mozzie, they waited outside. Um, come to find out they could have came up. But Mozzie was trying to sleep anyway. So, and he needed sleep. So, he kind of just held him in the car. Like, they laid in the back seat together while I was in the emergency room. So, one, L and D. Huh? Yeah, so I was in L and D. How long is this video? Because I'm going to try to keep it kind of short. So, I got to emergency room. They immediately just put a wristband on me, called up to L and D and let them know, like, we have one on the way. Okay. Okay, baby. All right. Now go. Don't come back over here. That's actually hard. Your daddy hug. When he come home, give him one. Y'all, he just trying to come over here and be in the mix. Y'all know how kids are. So, um, it's a part right here. The roots is, the roots was curling. Okay, so, basically, I get there, and they put the little monitor on me. They have me, like, to get a urine sample. They put the monitor on me to like monitor her and then like to check for the contractions and they got it up there pretty good i was indeed having contractions baby girl is and was doing great she was doing a lot of movement so i wasn't concerned about like her too tough because she was moving the whole time that i was monitoring the contractions at home and um on the way to the hospital and stuff so they got the monitor up there and she was doing a whole lot of moving. And you can definitely, I am asked the nurse, like, can you see the contraction? She was like, no. And then she kind of, like, adjusted it. And then she started, just contraction started showing up. So the, it was, like, probably a little less than 20 minutes of that. And I went to the bathroom. Because I had to tinkle again. And, y'all, why would I went to the bathroom? When I came back, they could not find her on the monitor, like. They ended up having to call in for somebody to and then I think they kind of low-key panicked. But we, me and the nurse, we knew she was moving. You could hear her move every now and then with the little, you know, that little circular thing they put on your stomach. Um, You can hear her kicking. I could feel her moving. But I think just, like, they kind of panicked because they could not get a heart rate on her um, for nothing. So they got the ultrasound tech in. Well, the doctor came in to do the ultrasound. And um, a med student, which they didn't ask if I wanted any med students in my room, but hey. Um, okay, I just wanted to clap that root again. Because they being stubborn. Um, so, yeah, they came in. And I think the nurse, the person who was in charge of the ultrasound, I think she kind of was like, 
a little like panicky, not knowing. But then she asked the nurse, like, hey, how much of a strip did you get before you lost her on the monitor? And she was like, probably like close to eight, 18 minutes. And she was like, okay, so we have a pretty good strip. She was like, and she was doing, everything was good, right? And she was like, yeah. So she was like, okay. Um, she just kept looking. And she was like, well, baby's doing really good. I don't want to scare you. She was like, but she's moving. We're just trying to get her so we could actually <laughs> get her heart rate again. Because she... Okay, every time they touched her, she moved to somewhere else. She would not stay still. Like, you could literally see on the ultrasound machine, you could see her running from side to side. Like, she was all over the place. She was kicking at them and everything. Y'all, give me a second. Yeah, she was kicking at them and everything. So, um, they saw, they didn't hook me back up to the monitors or anything after that. They, I guess they figured out, like, hey, I seen enough. Um, they ended up checking my cervix and stuff. And at one point while I was there, I felt like the contractions were getting worse. They weren't getting any more frequently. They just was kind of like kind of intensified a little bit, but I think being in that uncomfortable hospital bed to do that for you. So, I don't like to do two passes when I'm flat earning, but I'm kind of distracted. So, um, so yeah. So, basically, they, after that, they didn't monitor her anymore. They didn't monitor the contractions anymore. They basically was just like, I'm going to check your cervix and see and make sure that your your cervix looks good and you're not having any dilations. They did a swab for me and the urine and stuff to make sure I had no infections and stuff. I haven't got the results back for infections, but I'm pretty sure I figured out or they figured out what was wrong. They didn't tell me because they didn't have any results back while I was there. They actually just took the, the test and they were like, since your cervix looks good and everything... You know, I don't see any signs of dilation. Like, I feel comfortable sending you home. But if your contractions get worse or intensify, you have bleeding, you know, the whole shebang that you should look out for. They were like, just definitely come back. Any bleeding, come back. You know, loss of fluid, um, contractions that intensify and persistent, stuff like that. So, they sent me home. And basically, they said that I had Braxton Hicks. They had asked me, was I dehydrated? And my urine at the hospital, I know this is probably TMI, was like clearish yellow. Like mostly clear with like a slight tinge of yellow. But I'm not going to lie, before I ever went there, I did drink water because my first thought was maybe I'm dehydrated. Because I know earlier in the day, in the past couple days, I have not been drinking water like I should. And I've been noticing like my urine has been very dark y'all i used to love water it's like lately it's just something about water i don't and then i've developed a craving for frappes and like iced coffee so teas and stuff stuff that i don't normally drink i've been drinking them lately and i feel like i've and replacing them with water subconsciously like not on purpose so i woke up this morning after you know that whole ordeal and i see that i have um elevated ketones and urine specific gravity is kind of up so i think the gist of the whole situation was your girl is dehydrated like dehydrated now, who knew? I mean, I didn't know that. Because I'm parched right now, baby. I really am. But I didn't know that I was that dehydrated, y'all. Like, I had no clue. And then it's not like I have just not been drinking any water. It's just the last day or two. I've been a little slack, but I have still been drinking bottles of water, at least not how much I should. I'm not going to sit here and cap and say that I've been drinking like six, seven, eight bottles of water. I've been probably, yesterday I drunk two and a half. So, 
and I didn't go outside. I wasn't in the heat or anything. Um, so yeah, y'all, that mess scared the heck out of me. I was very like, I didn't freak out or anything because normally I would have been freaking out or whatever, but I feel like being 30 weeks, I know there's still risk with your babies being that early, but I felt a lot more comfortable than like delivering a 20 something weeker. You know what I mean? Um, if I did end up going into labor, but y'all just stay on top of your girl. If you don't hear from me, just go in them comments and be like, are you okay? Have you been drinking water? Because I can't believe that I was in the hospital last night. I went in at 12 a.m. Got I didn't get home till three something, closer to four, like three, like three thirty something, three forty-five. I fell asleep in the car. I ain't even gonna lie to you. On the way home, I was almost home, and then I just I finally fell asleep. Um, so yeah, basically, the moral of that story is. It's too hot to be out here playing in the heat, y'all. If y'all are pregnant, y'all are expect anybody's expecting. Make sure and then make sure y'all stay hydrated. Pregnant or not, just stay hydrated. It's very hot. This heat is not playing. Um and it ain't got no favorites, okay? So make sure y'all are staying hydrated. And yeah. Just, just hope your girl continues to, ooh, continues to do good in there. She's still been moving, very active. I want to do my hair. I actually, like I said earlier, I have an appointment today. It was supposed to be tomorrow. And then I'm going to come home and probably do something else to my hair, like a protective style, because first of all, I need to stop putting heat on my hair, but I'm going to do like a protective style. I know I am talking y'all's head off. Um, I'll probably come back at the end and show y'all how my hair looks flat iron. And then, yeah, that's basically all for this video. I just want to touch base and tell y'all about that because I feel like that was crazy. <laughs> so i'm done with my hair you guys i am hot i'm burning up i'm probably just gonna wrap it um until i get ready to go as you see this is the side i just finished so it's not as fluffy i don't know why like i don't know if you can tell on camera bust down middle part i don't know that's just what i love i love me a middle part good middle part but yeah, so my hair is actually doing better than what I thought. When your hair is really clean, your press outs come out so much better. Um, Cause you'll think some of your ends are damaged just off the fact that they're just dry and brittle and they need a good, good shampoo and get them products out. Shampoo. Cause um, I trimmed it before I did my top knot bun this past week. And it actually looks a lot better um, yeah. than when I flat ironed it for that. So. Yeah, we're on a healthy hair journey. Um, I've been doing some stuff that's not too healthy, a lot of heat and stuff, but I'm not really concerned about my curl pattern because I do twist outs um, anyways when I do wear my natural hair. But anyways, I just wanted to come and give you guys an update on um what's been going on with me, the baby, and... Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, this update, and I'll catch you with the next one.